I'm going to go over the answers for the uh, 2018 AP Chemistry FRQ question number three. This is one of the long questions. So this is all about uh, iron ions. So it says write the ground state electron configuration for the Fe2 plus ion. So whenever we're going to try to do you know a positive ion, then I like to have people do the neutral element first and then remove some electrons. So for a neutral iron, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. And if we're going to remove two electrons, we're going to remove these 4s because we remove the outermost electrons. Those are the ones that are most exposed and easiest to remove. When we fill them, we put electrons into the 4s before the 3d, but when we remove them, we remove them from the 4s before the 3d because these are uh, more exposed. So if I were going to write this out, I'd say the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, or I could just go ahead and say this is uh, the electron configuration of argon. Remove the 4s2, so I'm just going to have 3d6, and that would be a good answer. So there's my Fe2+, plus. that's the way I could show that, or I could go ahead and say the whole thing, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, get rid of that. 3d6, that would be a good answer as well. That's worth one point out of the 10. The next thing is to explain the idea that up here it says uh, Fe2 plus is a uh, 92 uh, picometers in the radius and the 3 plus is only 79. So the radius so they're given in the table. Use the principles of atomic structure. Explain why the radius of Fe2 plus is larger. Why is this guy larger? So on this kind of a problem, we would look and say, well, what's the same? The same is they both have 26 protons. And uh, what's different? Well, this lost two electrons, so it's 24. This lost three electrons, so it's only 23. So the answer here is the size of these atoms depend on the electrons. Okay, they're both being held by 26 protons, so that's really not different. But this 23 electrons and 24 electrons, 24 electrons is going to have more repulsion, more electron-electron repulsion. So we would expect that to be a little, uh, I'm sorry, yes, more electron-electron repulsion. So it's going to be a little bit larger than the Fe3 plus would be. So that's the answer. We have more electron-electron repulsion. Now, one common answer that is not correct is people say, well, you know, if you removed three electrons or two electrons, you know, that the uh, pull of the positive ions in the, you know, the positive nucleus is going to be greater. And that's just not going to be true. You know, we're saying that these are pulled in more greatly because there's uh, fewer electrons. If you remove these electrons, okay, then it is going to shrink down a little bit. Uh, this one shrinks down more than this one does. And because this is smaller, then there is going to be a greater attraction for those 26 protons. But that's the secondary effect. You know, the first effect is if you remove two electrons, you're going to have more electron, rep electron repulsion than if you remove three electrons. Okay, this is also worth one point. Okay, the last part is saying, okay, that uh, the ions... Uh, interact with water molecules and explain why the Fe3 plus uh, has a stronger attraction okay uh, to water molecules and just give one reason for that well this is Coulomb's law and Coulomb's law has to do with the charges and the distance so you could just say that you know Fe3 plus has a greater charge than Fe2 plus and therefore the force is going to be greater that would have earned you the point or you could say that um, the distance is smaller Okay, in Fe3+, plus because we just found out that Fe3+, plus is a smaller ion. But if you do do that, you have to be very careful and say that it's the distance between the iron ion and the water molecule. So we're looking for that distance, and you have to explicitly talk about that distance in order to get that point. So that's A, B, and C. A student obtains a solution that contains an unknown concentration of Fe2 plus ion. To determine the concentration of the Fe2 plus in the solution, the student titrates a sample with MnO4 minus, which converts the Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus by this equation. And we can see what's going on here. The Fe2 plus turns into Fe3 plus, 
and the permanganate turned into uh, Mn2+. Now, write a balanced equation for the half reaction of the Fe2 plus going to the Fe3 plus. So I got this started here. So we have Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus. All we need is some electrons. So which side is more positive? The one on the right. How much more positive? By one. So we're going to add one electron on the right. And that gives us our complete answer right here. And that's worth one point. Um, remember that electrons in the equation always are positive, you know, add electrons. Don't like subtract electron from every two plus. That would not get you a point. Okay, next it says the student titrates a 10 milliliter sample of the Fe2 plus solution. Calculate the value of the Fe2 plus concentration in the solution if it takes 17.48 milliliters of the 0 0.0535 molar KMnO4 to reach the equivalence point. So we're going to say, well, we take 17.48 milliliters, and we're going to go from milliliters to liters, so we're using our molarity, milliliters to moles, using our molarity as a conversion factor. So that's going to get us moles of KMnO4. And then we have to take into account the fact that for every one mole of KMnO4, KMnO4, we need five moles of Fe2+. So we're going to have our stoichiometry step. So one mole of KMnO4 turns into five moles of Fe2+. So we get a value of 0 0.003509 moles of Fe2+. Now from there we say, well, okay, this is a 10 milliliter solution. And 10 milliliters is the same thing as 0 0.0100 liters. So we're going to take this equation, divide by 0 0.0100 liters of solution. And so we're just going to move the decimal place over and we see we're going to get 0 0.3059, which I'm going to round off to 306. And that's my molarity of my Fe2 plus solution, which is the answer. Now, this part here is worth two points. Okay, one point, two points if you get all the way to the answer. But if you at least do this part here where you change your uh, concentration into moles, you don't have to actually show the answer at that point, but if you get that, that is worth one point. So one point here and one point for getting to the complete answer. A uh, common answer that we saw on the AP test is students were using, you know, the dilution equation, which is the volume times the molarity of one chemical equals volume times the molarity of the other chemical. And that doesn't work in this case because that doesn't take into account the one to five ratio. So uh, if students had done that, they would probably at least get one point because they're doing the volume times the molarity here. Uh, but they didn't get the, to the correct answer. Okay, the last little section of this, it says, to deliver the 10 milliliter sample of Fe2+, okay, the student has a choice of using a burette, a graduated cylinder, a beaker, or a volumetric flask. And explain why the 25 milliliter volumetric flask would be a poor choice for use for delivering the required volume. And the idea here is a 25 milliliter uh, volumetric flask it has make a, can make a very accurate measurement of 25 milliliters. So it's great for a 25 milliliter sample, but it would be awful for a 10 milliliter sample because you would just be estimating. On a graduated cylinder, there's only one mark, and that is for whatever size is listed on here. So this one is a 200 milliliter volumetric flask. So this would be great for making 200 milliliter measurements, but for uh, of 25 milliliter volumetric flask, it would only be good for 25 milliliters, but it wouldn't be terrible for 10 milliliters. And that's the idea, that it's only good for one measurement. The next part says, in a separate experiment, the student is given a sample of powdered iron that contains an inert impurity. So it doesn't have any iron in it and it doesn't react. The student uses a procedure to oxidize the Fe2 plus into Fe2O3, which is rust. The student collects the following data during the experiment. So the mass of the iron with the impurity is 6.724 grams, and then after they turns it into Fe2O3, it weighs 7.531 grams. So the first thing is calculate the number of moles of iron in Fe2O3. Well, to do that, I'm going to need the molar mass of Fe2O3, so I'm taking two times the, um, the number for Fe from the periodic table, so 2 times 55.85 grams per mole, and 3 times the value given for oxygen, which is 16.00. Add those together, get 159.70 grams of Fe2O3 per mole 
of Fe203. So now I'm just going to take the number that we're given. So we have 7.531 grams of Fe203. And I'm going to use my uh, uh, molar mass, so 159.70 grams for every mole of Fe203. And then I need one more conversion, and that is for every one mole of Fe203, I'm going to get two moles of Fe, and I can tell that just from the formula. So I'm going to work out this problem, and I end up with 0 0.04716 moles of Fe. And that is worth one point for doing that calculation. Okay, that was wrong. That was the uh, moles of Fe203. Okay, so I didn't, that was just the first step. So I have to double that to get my actual answer. So the actual answer here is 0 0.09431 moles of Fe. That's better. That would get a point. Whoops. Okay, for part H, calculate the mass, the percent by mass, in the original sample of powdered iron with the inert impurity. So what I can do is I know that this is how many moles of iron I have. What I want to do is to uh, figure out what my percent in my original sample. Alrighty, I gave myself a little bit of room. And so if I know my moles of iron, I can certainly figure out my grams of iron. So I'll take 0.0. .0 nine four three one grams of iron and I say for there are fifty five point eight five just from the periodic table grams of iron in one mole of iron and I just did that wrong okay what I did wrong was my units so the answer here this number that I have is the number of moles Of iron and then I'm going to use one mole of iron is 55.85 grams of iron Phew. and that answer is 5.267 grams of iron and what I want to do is I want to get the percent by mass so I want to go back and take my original sample 6. Uh, 724. So I'm going to say if I have 5.267 grams of iron over 6.724 grams of my sample times 100%, 78.33%. Okay, so again, that is worth one point to get to this answer. So all I did was take my answer from before, which was moles of iron, change it to grams of iron using my molar mass, and then uh, divide by the size of the sample times 100, 78. So that sample is 78.33% iron by mass. That was letter H. Now my last part on here was confusing for a lot of people. And that says, if the oxidation of the iron in the original sample was incomplete, so that sum of the 7.531 grams of the product was FeO instead of Fe203, would the calculated mass percent of iron in the original sample be higher, lower, or the same as the actual mass percent of the iron? Justify your answer. So we're going to say that this number here, the 78%, that is the actual mass. Okay, if everything was turned into Fe203, uh, but if in there there was some FeO instead of Fe203, how would that affect everything? So you can kind of see, well, here, if I kind of reduced, you know, the or changed the FeO, I could turn that into Fe2O2, okay, versus Fe203. That means in my sample, you know, there's this is the greater percentage of iron in this guy than there is percent iron here. So I would be, um, there would actually be more 
iron in my sample and I would end up with an uh, answer that is actually a little bit lower than the mass percent of iron in my actual um, sample. Now, another way to do this, so if you just mentioned that this guy has, you know, smaller percentage or greater percentage oxygen than this one, therefore your answer is going to come out, you know, a, um, there really are more moles in your sample than you think there are, so therefore you're going to come out with a lower um, calc uh, answer than, you know, your calculated answer would be lower than, you re than it really is. But the other way to do it is say, well, instead of this uh, number, 7.531 grams of my product uh, being Fe203, which is how we did our calculation, what if we said the 7.531 uh, grams was FeO instead of Fe203, how would that change my number? So it turns out that uh, uh, if I take Fe plus O, 55.85 plus 16, my molar mass is 71.85 grams per mole, and that's for FeO. So if I started my problem again and I said I had 7.531 grams of my sample, and instead of uh, uh, Fe203, I see that's FeO, so I'd use 71.85 grams of FeO. Then I say, well, in every FeO, one mole of FeO would give me one mole of iron. I get 0 0.1048 moles of iron. Okay, now when I did this problem before, I got 0 0.09431 moles of iron. So you can see that I'm actually getting a larger uh, moles of iron if it were made out of FeO because there's a greater percentage of Fe and FeO. If I were to take that and multiply by the 55.85, I would find out that I have 5.8539 grams of iron if my uh, sample really were FeO, and that would work out to be an 87.06% uh, value. So the idea that if I take my extreme case and find out that in my sample there is FeO, then I would actually have a larger value than if, it was, if everything was Fe203. So my uh, actual mass, okay, so my original sample, the calculated mass in my original sample, would end up being lower than the actual mass. So let me try to say that one more time. And that is, if my sample in the extreme case contained all FeO, then uh, when I got done, my sample would really be 87.06% uh, iron. But I'm calculating it as 78.33% iron, which means my calculated answer would be less than, lower than, the actual mass. Now, that's only if it's all FeO, but if there's any FeO, it's going to be something a little larger than 78.33, the extreme case all the way up to 87.06, but the idea, the answer is lower because there's more, greater percentage of iron in FeO. That's letter G and uh, very few people got that point. That is worth one point, by the way, for that whole section. That is the whole t uh, question number three from the 2018 exam.